Welcome to People. I'm Shirley Lin. Today I'm in Tianmu, and this is a very special place. It's a restaurant. It's called Lily Bar and Lounge. But the important thing is that I'm here to interview and to talk with Patrick Lee, who is an artist as well as the owner of this restaurant. And first of all, his arts are very unique. As you can see, the one behind me, it's uh, you know the leader of China, Mao Zedong. And this is the leader of Taiwan. Well, they are former leaders, okay? And this uh, former leader, Chiang Kai-shek. And look what he's got in his hand. And uh, well, first of all, he's got his arm around him. They're great buddies, and this is rare, okay? This is unusual for this to be happening. But anyway, they're sharing the beer together. So this art is called Time for a Drink. But let's go and talk to Patrick. All right, this is the Patrick I'm talking about. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Shirley. It's so good to have you here. And well, actually, I'm really glad to be here at the restaurant. And then look at your art. You are most welcome. So, sir, you know, I'm also very exciting. You know, sir, you come over here to introduce my restaurant and my artwork. Yes. So this one right behind us, it's yes. amazing. All right, it's the Chinese, well, former Chinese leader Mao Zedong. Correct. But uh, what's unusual about him is that he's wearing a pair of Converse. Well, yeah. actually, it's one big Converse <laughs> shoe. <laughs> Eventually, Hi. Converse, yeah. you know, a long time ago when I was a child, those days uh, it's called, that's a sneaker with a red star named Zhong Guoqiang, Strong China. And oh. literally, it's turned into Converse, of course. There must be some story behind that. We don't know. Of course, now the owner of that uh, sneaker is an American company called Converse. Right. 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 Oh, of course. There's a connection with China because mm -hmm. there's the red star mm -hmm. on the, you know, the emblem, mm -hmm. uh, the, the trademark. Right. Oh, so, how did you think about having Mao Zedong wear Converse? Well, I actually, it's, it's uh, have something to do with. You know, it's my childhood memory because uh, those days, you know, I had a pair of uh, Converse. Oh, you actually uh, did. Eventually, those days, the pair of a sneaker named Strong China, Zhong Guoqiang. Yeah. Therefore, Strong you know, uh, you know, I just you know, it's, uh, my childhood memory and uh, the current situation scenario of China, Taiwan, and. Uh, let me, you know, uh, think about, you know, uh, put them together. So uh, that have some historical and uh, contemporary meaning Me. of uh, Taiwan and China, <laughs> right? Well, it's amazing how you found a photo mm. of him, you mm. know, that profile mm. in the wicker chair mm. and uh, just perfect. Eventually, it's, uh, that picture, you know, of Mao Zedong on, on a wicker chair is, is very popular. You yeah, know, many yes. artists use that, but uh, you know, say in a different way. I'm the uh, one more like a more naughty, you know, so put <laughs> him in uh, wearing a pair of uh, oversized <laughs> sneaker, right? right? Oh, wow, that is really cool. Yeah. Well, we should go on to the next one. And, okay, um, sure, let's do it. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. talk about that one. Well, we actually saw a similar one to this at the front mm -hmm, door. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is actually another original, but yes. of the same idea. Mm -hmm. So here's again, there's Mao, and then there's, you know, Jiang, Jiang Kai-shek. Kai right. But uh, um, that, that's, a, that's a, you know, of Mao itself, that's also a pretty popular original right. one. Correct. And, then, and then of uh, Chiang Kai-shek himself is also a pretty original mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, this hand and this hand, it wasn't there before. So, <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> uh, you know, the hand of the god. <laughs> the <laughs> like god's here. Uh, <laughs> the god's here. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, eventually uh, this arm is uh, the arm of uh, one of my chefs, right? Oh, uh, he's Actually, famous now. Yeah. And uh, this, also his arm holding the beer bottle. Right. right. So, so, of course, uh, the image of uh, both of them was uh, taken from historical, you know, the photo. Then, of course, we moved that around to, you know, the, put them 
together, you know, the, make a party for them. Mm. Right. <laughs> a party. Right. Yes, a beer party. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, having Taiwan beer. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, right. Chiang Kai-shek, like, you know, the, naturally, he loved Taiwan beer. Right. right. And he would introduce it to right. Mao. Right. <laughs> exactly. So actually, this whole thing was silk screen. Correct. Right. But the hand part uh, was painted. Right. You right. can. You, no, it, eventually, it's now. It's also silk screen. Oh. Right. But uh, it's just transplanted from you know the my chef's arm because right. uh, there's none of this uh, image exist. Right. So the, I have to make it happen. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's right. right. This is really cool. So here's Taiwan beer, right. share with Mao. Right. And obviously you have to ask permission for the photos, right? Yeah, I, ca I did call them, you know, the, you call I call them Mao Zedong, I give him a ring. You know, the no answer, I call uh, Chiang Kai-shek and he was three or very exciting. Then he helped me to find Mao Zedong. Then they have a consensus, both of them agree. This, should, this painting should make it happen. Right. And also, this uh, painting represents a scenario of a uh, uh, cross strait political Relations. relationships. <laughs> right. That's right. right. And actually, um, Chen Kai Shek told you make sure that you have him holding a Taiwan beer. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the only that was a deal. insist of his. And Mao is said, uh, whatever, so long as uh, they can have a party and he agree to anything. All right. right. Okay. Well, there's an upstairs to your restaurant. Yeah, that's, so let's, uh, let's go head take over a look. Now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Patrick, now yes. that I've got a tour of your restaurant and all the the drawings, the paintings, rather. I want to get to know more about you, though. I mean, you know, you've had <laughs> quite a life to start <laughs> off with. And in fact, I think most of our listeners don't know, um, don't know yet, you're actually a self-taught artist. Now, you grew up knowing that you really like art. Are your parents artistic? This is a question I always <laughs> ask people. <laughs> My parents, they are farmers. Oh. They were farmer, anyhow. So, they were peasants, so okay. was, uh, everything is just, you know, the, maybe they have uh, that artistic gene, and so maybe I inherit that, right? Right, right. But anyhow, I just love to, you know, the, do drawing, painting, yeah. So I know that, I think you grew up kind of um, not very well off because you actually even like, went to school with no shoes on on your feet. <laughs> so what did you use to draw as drawing when you were small? Oh, uh, you know, so we draw on, Anything? On, on the dirt, right? On, on the dirt? On the ah. dirt, on the ground, right? On the yeah. dirt, right? Because uh, when we were kids, you know, the, there were, you know, the yard and the, which is to uh, dry the grain, dry the rice, right? The grain, the crop. So, so we draw on that. Then literally draw on, on board, right? Go to school with charcoal, draw on the board, black board, then so draw on paper. So you were using chalk, chalk this whole time? I mean, what kind no, of no, things the, were you that's using? No, no, that's the chalk, not... Ch not yeah, <laughs> yeah, but chalk. I mean, like at home, I mean... You I mean also no, at home, nothing. Chalk, nothing. Nothing, nothing. nothing. You know, so when we were kids... Not even pencils? You know, so at my age, those days, in my era, you know, it's, Taiwan was so poor, right? During the... Uh, 40, 50s, that was really poor. Mm. Right. So it's not even easy to, you know, the, the, for our parents to feed our, we, you know, brother and sisters. Yeah. Right? So, so the art supply, don't dream about that. And we don't, didn't even know what is art, right? Yeah, right. I know, that's true. Right. So it's amazing that you actually grew up with this interest in art. Um, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Well, I got a uh, total of eight, including me. Right? Yeah, eight. So it's uh, five boys, you know, uh, no, two, three boys, including me, and five, five girls. girls. Right. And while your parents were busy in the mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. you and your brothers and sisters kind of find, in your own way, find ways to entertain yourself, right? Right. Or yes. do you, what, but you also help out in the, in the fields. Yeah, sure, we help. And we have to, you know, the help in you know, the crop or having 
to help you know, the, remove the, the weed in the rice paddy. Right? See. Right. Or you know, the feed the duck, feed the chicken, feed the hog. Yeah. The pig, the two. Yes, right. pigs. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Of course. I mean. Then we go to school without sneaker no because shoes. can cannot afford sneaker. Not until I was uh, the third grade. Finally, I have uh, one pair of sneaker that was a uh, star on that, right? Yes. Called that time, red star that time called Zhongguo Jiang. But uh, it's so precious. So we have, we tie the string and, and carry that on our shoulder, go to so, school still barefooted. <laughs> and after a few months, feel, you know, that I got to wear that, then my feet grow bigger than the shoes. So, so painful. <laughs> You know, the, literally the shoes, you know, the, the front of the shoes, the toe come out, the back, you know, the butt, you know, my feet, you know, the touch the floor, right? Really? Very sure. You try to squeeze your big feet into, into the, the unfitted canvas, oh. the unfitted Zhong Guo Chang those days. Right? <laughs> yes, uh, you right. said it's strong. What? China Zhong strong? Guo Chang, China, China strong. Strong China. Strong China. <laughs> strong right. China. <laughs> what a name. But I gathered that you were a good student because you actually managed to go and study at Zhengzi University, right, right. which is one of the prestigious mm. universities mm. in Taiwan. Right. And uh, you were studying... Accounting. Accounting. Right. Now that's useful. But then eventually, when you, after you graduated, mm. do you think you really put that into good use, accounting? Well, eventually, I never, you know, the you know, they have a job that is accounting related. But, uh, you know, the accounting itself does help me, you know, to realize uh, and to manage business in a more efficient way. Okay. Because I um, will be more figure or, you know, the sensitive, right? Mm. You are a very adventuresome guy because um, you know you kind of try different businesses. Mm. You're you're one who loves taking risks and trying different things. And you actually from accounting major, you got into fishery business. Yeah, you know that so before fishery, I was in fashion business. I was the manager, manage you know then uh, one of the major. Uh, fashion importing house in New York. You know, so I was their manager. You know, so in Taiwan, managed their Taiwan office. Yes. Literally managed their office. You know, the so cross Asia from Korea all the way to Singapore to Thailand, right? But uh, after a few years, I found out oh, that's too easy. Too so easy. So I <laughs> try to find something that not exciting. many people. You know, the never heard of, so I get into uh, marine seafood business. Okay. Right. But so from there, of course, you know, the, it's about during the start from the Fourth and War period of time. So oh, there, those days I went ago. to, you know, the South America, to Argentina, Tina, or Chile quite often. Right. Then, anyhow, I get into seafood business. And literally, you know, the free owner, the fishing free owner, you know, came to me and that uh, they have a catch in of a uh, salmon in North uh, High Sea of Northern Pacific, Pacific Ocean. Therefore, and come to me, ask me for me to help them on the marketing. There, so I did. Then, from there, I get caught, you know, the in political, you know, the confliction for you know between. USA and Asian countries, especially Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, for high sea, you know, the uh, 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 benefit of uh, between countries. Okay. So I, w I was set up by Uncle Sam. <laughs> then I spent more than five years in the States, in the pen. Yeah. I mean, in really in the pen, in the in, in a prison, prison, in a prison, right? For five years. And uh, of course, you know, one month after, you know, they set me up, and Taiwan surrender and sign, give up and sign, uh, give up, give up our high sea 
uh, sovereign sovereignty on uh -huh. Northern Pacific, uh -huh. you know, from fish fishing to Uncle Sam, oh, right? And South Korea also one month after Taiwan, South Korea also did the same. Of course, Japan would never give up. That's they they were right. It's their right. Uh -huh. But Taiwan and South Korea, we need our Uncle Sam, <laughs> so to make us you know, sleep better during the evening. Uh -huh. Those those days because uh, we need their protection we need their their weapon supply we need their anyhow but it's set up it's life you know different people have different life right and uh, anyhow it's just my just my life experience yes well it was unfortunate but then how, how yeah was anyhow you lose you win some you, you lose some, some you lose some you lose some you win some how you lose some years? you learn some yes right? yes agree right. <laughs> so how were those five years Oh, five those five years, you know. You uh, had friends. to say, of course, I met some friends. They are <laughs> they are mafia, you know. They are drug lord. Oh, I'm right? sorry. Right. So uh, I pick up my <laughs> tennis skill when I was in prison those oh, days, well, right? Good. The drug lord from a uh, Colombian drug lord called uh, let me see, uh, Andre Pulido. As now I remember his name. A good-looking guy, so gentleman, such a gentleman. When you looking at him, you you wouldn't know he tell he's a drug lord, right? He's the one teach me how to play tennis, right? Really? Right, Andre Prido. Now I remember. <laughs> okay. I wonder how he is now. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. Now you got out of prison and everything. How did you get into art? Oh, you know, so how did you I, I always, that? I always, since I was a kid, I always doing. Oh, I mean, like, how did you decide that for the rest of your life, your, your focus was going to be art, and then you thought, this is it. Anyhow, I'm going to do painting <laughs> for the rest of my life. Anyhow, it's, uh, after I get out of the prison in from states, I was deported, right? Of course, you know, the Taiwan is home. They don't have to to deport me because I was set up and I paid my ticket, flew over there and, and you know, step into their, their, their trap, right? Get caught. But uh, after I came back, they deport me. Then I think, you know, so I was not in a drug. I was not doing anything, you know, so, right? I was just buy and sell fish, right? Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, buy and sell salmon, right? So, so why all right? But why I had deserved that? So anyhow, maybe you know, so I have to blame on my pre previous life. But anyhow, I decide not to spend, you know, my life, you know, on those big business. So therefore, therefore, I spend. I open up bar, small bar or so restaurant, and I no profile. right no profile and <laughs> do my painting and uh, the space, the wall of the bar or the restaurant will be my gallery to show my work, right? And of course, at the same time, I acting as advisor to the big consortium, right? And so in Taiwan, you know, so at the early days, I was uh, advisor to a uh, core Pacific group. Like, you know, the Jing Hua Cheng is one of their subsidiary. Yes. And my good friend uh, or the big boss of a uh, core Pacific group is uh, Shen Qingjing, Xiao Shen, right, the Jing Hua Cheng, right, or Wei Jing Ji Tuan, the Core Pacific Group. Yes. Then also, literally, you know, I work, and I'm still is, acting as a business advisor to Joseph Garner, the FASA group in the whole world. They, they design and install the best, the most sophisticated uh, Fasa, such as uh, Taipei 101, such as uh, Jing Mao building in Shanghai, mm -hmm. such as uh, Morris Tower in Shanghai, such as early days like uh, you know the uh, Opera House of uh, Sydney, or like in you know, the Museum of Mercedes Benz in Stug Stuttgart of uh, Germany, like you know the uh, anyhow many. Mm. Substantial one in Hong Kong, those high rise building, Bank of China in Hong Kong, or whatever. Well, Many I see of that, them. yeah. Right. I see that, um, you know, you do cover a whole variety of different kind of art, I mean, themes, mm -hmm. themes. Like, actually, you have a collection 
yeah. here in your book, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this, like, this, yeah. Yeah, that's right. This is the Guan Yin. Uh, uh, this one is uh, oh, Sujiamoni. Oh, oh, I'm Sujiamoni. sorry. Okay. Buddha, anyhow. Right. Sujiamoni. Yeah. Right. See, so not just Mao or Jiang. Mm -hmm. Jiang, Jiang, right. Jiang, Jing, Jiang Kai Shek, right? Or Chiang Kai Shek, but uh, um, there's also of the Buddha, you mm. know, like Buddhism, mm. and uh, right. you also have um, female um, profiles. Nude? Right. Um, yeah, in nude. Right. Um, do you know where? There, I mean, try to find You've it. You've got some really, um, and then of course, oh, the red ones. That's it. And then of course, uh, um, landscapes. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, here we go. Yeah. This yeah, these ones. You can nice mm -hmm. red mm -hmm. background and yeah. calligraphy. Beautiful right. calligraphy, and also a nude female right. nude. And this, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and then there's landscapes. Mm -hmm. How how did you decide on these themes? Well, actually, it's just anyhow. So those women, whether they are those nude, whether they are Chinese or Westerner, I have no idea. But the background, you know, you see the writing, the calligraphy. That's uh, Chinese. Yeah. So, so it's a blend of uh, West and East, Chinese and West. Right. Western is okay. right. right. <laughs> but. Um, Interestingly though, you're saying that about 90% of collectors of your artworks are from abroad. Right. Why is that? This is really, really interesting. I think it's uh, basically the art training between the, we the Westerner and we Chinese or Taiwanese, it totally there is a big gap, right? Historically, you know, the, the Westerner they are more sensitive to art and beauty. So it's, uh, it's really you step into walk into someone's office or their house on the wall. There is no art. Everyone have painting, either a good one or a bad one, either a print or a genuine, right? Mm -hmm. But in Chinese. Most of the, or in Taiwan, most of the family or in the office, you don't, you see bare wall, or wall with some very goofy kind of, uh, of a display or hang up yeah. there, which don't work together with the surrounding. Yes. Right? So, so I would say maybe Westerners are more sensitive and they love art, which uh, are Chinese, but uh, also Western related, right? So mm -hmm. the, you can see the element of my art are Chinese, but the way I express that is more in more in uh, Western uh, skills mm. or Western method. Mm -hmm. right? So I think they love it because because of that. Okay. So it's, uh, really have a piece of art from, because in Chinese, in Taiwan, most of them, they love my brushwork, mm. right? But so uh, the Westerner, they not only like my brushwork, but my, my <laughs> other work, you know, so they okay. especially the yes. love it. You know, it's difficult for me, you want to call, call it pop art or or pop whatever, art. I have no idea, you know, the art is art. So it's Up, difficult yeah. for me to give them a definition or to categorize them. Mm, right. Pop art, that's a combination of or, Western or politi East. Political art or political or art, you know, so with uh, Buddha religious. head or Guan Yin, but uh, nothing is uh, religion related. But of course, have, uh, you know, the, there is a Buddha head, right? Mm. Yeah, I think the Western people, they really yeah. like to um, decorate their homes so right. that um, it, that it, it welcomes when they welcome their friends right, right. Uh, to make it a very comfortable right, place cozy, for friends, right. a cozy place for friends. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. Western people, um, they almost always mm -hmm. their homes. They almost always have some kind of Eastern or Asian kind of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't know, indication or right, art. Sure. Sure, sure, De sure. Decoration right. to their homes. Right. Yeah, I think there it's their curiosity. 
about the East? I think so. we should proud that Chinese, right? Taiwan also part of uh, you know the forget about politics. Taiwan also Chinese, right? We are also Chinese, but uh, mm. anyhow, so we don't really uh, cherish our five thousand years of uh, culture or history. But uh, Westerner, they are very much curious about what is the Chinese culture, right? They are they always feel we are more profound in culture. So the, in that case, they respect art or anything that's uh, Chinese related. And I'm lucky, like, you know, my work is Chinese related, either in culture or in politics. Mm -hmm. or in lifestyle. Mm -hmm. right. Well, you know, it's interesting that you seriously got into art in the 90s, mm -hmm. but then uh, it wasn't until 2002 mm -hmm. that you actually had formal solo exhibition. Yeah, huh? Like, um, you know, in Taiwan, but then, mm -hmm. but then the next one was like over in Denmark. Yes. You know, it's, it's interesting that mm -hmm. uh, you, you made yourself known mm -hmm. uh, outside of Taiwan, mm -hmm. and actually you're probably uh, more well-known outside of Taiwan than... Correct. Ta <laughs> Correct. If you ask someone in Taiwan, in the, in the art, you know, the field, I think so, uh, 999 out of 1,000, they would, would then know who is Patrick Lee, <laughs> right? But how did you make friends with all these foreigners? How did they get to know you from way out there? You know, it's word of mouth, right? Really? That's <laughs> and it? And nowadays, you know, the IT is so popular, so handy. So it's not Facebook, surprise. Huh? And Facebook <laughs> or, you know, the email, whatever. I right? see. Right? So and word of mouth. And so often, you know, I got to inquiry from Berlin, from London, from New York, from Singapore, from Hawaii, from well, Tokyo. They, yeah, I need this, I need that. Do you have that or can I do something, you know, similar or whatever. So, so all these people are asking you for right. exhibits in right. their country, right? right? So the list never ends. So it's, your schedule must be really full. Oh, where's, I, where's your next exhibit going to be? Going to be here at Lili. Now oh, I have an exhibition goodness. in. Uh, now I have an exhibition in Geneva, right? And in. Uh, you just had it. Lyon. Or in Geneva. Yeah, in you Egypt, know the right? one French lady. He, she managed that, and I have to find out how she is going now. But the one in Geneva, he sent me a few image, and one in Lyon, he sent me a few image. I didn't go because I don't have time to go. I still need my time for to spend in my studio to you know to do some more work. Right. So they love your work. Uh huh. Why? Did they ever tell you why they love your work? Yeah, you 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 are asking me a question that's uh, <laughs> which you know so I wouldn't have an answer if I. No, then I will be even more successful, right? So well, I don't know. I know, Patrick. It's right. all because you got your name on it. Patrick <laughs> Lee. Uh, yeah, anything that's got your name Patrick Lee on it, yeah, uh -huh. they want it. Mm -hmm. So you have some faithful collectors of your artwork. Uh -huh. And um, lately, you've been, just only a couple of days ago, I think, you came with landscapes where it's just the sun mm -hmm. that's in gold mm -hmm. and red and then the white mountains mm -hmm. because it's all covered in mm -hmm. snow and then a black cliff. Mm -hmm. I love that uh -huh. that that uh -huh. piece by the way. Okay. You told me it's already sold. Right. So I could try to do um, something similar. Yeah. Right? Because uh, the brushwork, no second piece is hundred percent exactly. It could be What was the name of that one? Oh the did you black have a name one? For it? Yes, did you have a name for it? No, it's uh, none of my work. None that of my work untitled. have a name, right? And if it's All of my work have have a, doesn't yes. have a title. So if it's untitled, right. it's even more precious. Right. Uh, anyhow, that's uh, you said. <laughs> I hope so. Right. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much, Patrick. It's uh, been a lot of fun learning, getting to know you, and appreciating your art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Say thank you, honey. Say thank you, bye, bye. honey. Say thank you.
<laughs> Honey, don't bark. Oh, okay. <laughs> bark also one way to say thank you, right? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for watching, people. I'm Shirley Lin. Thank you. Bye.